How's everybody going this wonderful morning, evening, afternoon? Well, I hope you guys are doing really good. In this video, we're going to talk about Dolby Atmos Innuendo. So you know Steinberg has released Nuendo 11, and they finally brought the internal version of the Dolby Atmos production suite renderer. I gotta say this, it is pretty tough. And it's challenging to do. And it takes a lot of step to make things work with that Dolby Atmos. It might be a long video, but you know, it's a step by step. You know, I'm not gonna go way too fast on it because I wanna do this slowly so that you know what to do. Without further ado, let's get into this. So I'm in this project that I'm working on, which is the hammer. But when it comes with setting up with Dolby Atmos, there are a lot of things to support. You know, in order, if you load Dolby Atmos right away, you might end up saying not supported and the whole interface of the Dolby Atmos renderer is going to be grayed out. And it tells you what you need to set up. So in order to set it up, Let's go to project and you want to make sure that it is on 48 kilohertz, also known as 48,000 kilohertz. Well, commonly we use 44.1 kilohertz or 44,100 kilo or 44,100 hertz as part of the sample rate. If we have 44,000 100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz Dolby Atmos will not support it and it's a bummer. I wish Dolby Atmos supported that because 44.1 kilohertz is a very common and it's pretty much in the default sample rate. And then the next step is you want to go to the studio setup. When it comes with like whatever type you are in you want to have your samples as least 512 samples. If you go to 256 or lower, or if you go 384 or lower than that, Dolby Atmos will mark you as not supported. So the renderer will say not supported, and it tells you, you know, you have to change your sample, your samples, you know, including channel configuration. So you want to make sure that you have your buffer size at 512 samples. Well, Dolby Atmos supports stereo, but you want to make sure that you add a surround sound bus, okay? So for me, I set it up as 7.1.4 as an output. Well, I have it on stereo out, but I want to link like I want to put all of my sounds into this output and send it through my stereo out. Well this is up to you on what you want to set it up because I don't have a surround sound hardware but I want to do it in like in a binaural way or immersive way to make it look like a surround sound even if you have the stereo headphones. So you want to make sure you have 7.1.4 out included because I know if because if you have stereo, you won't be able to load objects. You will only load beds. Okay? So if you have 7.1.4 output as part of the audio connections, this will pop up on the mix console in the lower zone. So you have two master levels, so so most of these can go to the 7.1.4 output and most of these can go to the stereo output. But what I did is I just want to load a send and make it and send this through stereo out so I can hear everything. All right. So next you want to load render for Dolby Atmos. If you have render for Dolby Atmos if you don't know where it is, it is located on the Spatial Plus menu and you will see where it says Render for Dolby Atmos. So this is the hardware, the, the, the interface that you get. So you get this whole UI with a lot of dots. You can get these rectangles and dots. Rectangles represents beds. 
These blue circles represent objects, and these means the number of channels. Like if you have stereo, you get two of these guys. But if it's around, you get like multiple of these used. So if you're using mono, you only get one circle, whether it's bad or an object. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to route a clip to Dolby Atmos. Before I insert the clip to the Dolby Atmos, you know, I'm just going to show this one that I'm working on. So I'm going to do use the hammer click for a sample on putting this to Adobe Atmos. So what I wanted to do is I want to play this, see how it sounds like. So here's the project that I'm working on. Apparently you do not hear a sound, but if I just turn off Dolby Atmos, Yeah, so just a reminder, if you're playing a sound that is not ported to Dolby Atmos or it is not I mean, directly ported to stereo out, it will become silent. So the sound will not come in, which it's not linked to Dolby Atmos. Okay, so in order to make it into Dolby Atmos, you know, you got to use a tool of it. So let me go ahead and play that again. Yeah, so this is the hammer. By the way, this is in a single mono track and it's 7.1.4 out. Well, we're using a VST multi panner, but you cannot use it in VS in the inserts such as the VST multi panner having it separate. Otherwise, this will not work. That will not work. So, what you need to do to open this to the actual VST multi panner is you just gotta double click and you get this mode right here, which is the bed mode and object mode. So, I'm doing the object mode for this one. So, this is the object mode right here. <coughs> and, and I have done some automations for the hammer because this is where. The person is like hammering at like which is hitting the hammer, which is the one that is damaged, which it hits in different locations. It's going like around the dots and cleaning up and down and everything like that. You know, this is in the construction venue. So let's hear that. Let's take a look at that. Okay, well, if it's not linked, then this will become a bad mode. It is not going to be an object. All right, so when it comes to linking to Dolby Atmos, we're going to go to Project. You've got to go to where it says ADM for Dolby Atmos. You know, if you get like a blank project or a blank, you know, sound, you want to make sure that it says renderer for Dolby Atmos. Okay, if it's not there, you if if this is not there, you know, you have to go to the master where where is the surround sound master channel and you just want to load the plugin called renderer for Dolby Atmos. Make sure it's on because if it's disabled, it will not do anything. So make sure that it's turned on. I have hammer on solo though. So let's go ahead and go to the Dolby Atmos ADM. <clears throat> well, there is an external Dolby Atmos renderer. Well, if you have a separate renderer, and that will take more steps than doing this from the Dolby Atmos renderer or production suite inside Nuendo. Well, apparently, you will get 
these two apps, which is the Adobe Atmos Renderer and the Adobe Atmos Renderer Remote. Unfortunately, my Adobe Atmos Renderer is expired, but I will use the Adobe Atmos Renderer as the remote as my substitute. If you're going to use the external Adobe Atmos Renderer, you have you you will be introduced by this application right here, and you'll get a lot of meters and the channels right here, and you get all these objects and bits right here. And the dots is where you get all of these, you know, these dots are going to appear right here. And you can choose person or theater, whatever you want to do. This takes more steps than doing it inside Nuendo. So this is outside Nuendo because that's an external Dolby Atmos renderer. So I want to add an object, which is the hammer. So remember, make sure you go to where it says add objects. And you get to no inputs. It doesn't have, and it says no outputs yet. You can put the groups such as effects. And I can just choose mid because it, the hammer is the one that's doing everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it down here on the drop down menu and it will load hammer. And you can see the num the object bus number four will say object and mono. So let me go ahead and go to the renderer. So you will be presented with the dots right here. So these dots, which is the object view, those are the objects. They're not beds. Like if there's a bed, it will not appear as a dot or like or a circle or anything like that that is inside the object view in the renderer. So I just solo this one, the hammer, and here's what we get. Okay, right here, this is the hammer. This is the hammer right here. So you can see that it's the object is loaded into Dolby Atmos as an object. Okay? And you can see that it's doing that. So let me go ahead and open the VST multi panner and you can see that it changed. It's now an object mode. So let me turn off the write automation and the, and the read automation. So if I move this, you can see that both the Dolby Atmos and the multi panner is controlling together. You can see this, this circle right there. Notice that blue circle right here with the ring around it. That's the hammer right there. You know, if I move it right here, right here, or if I move behind, left, right, you know, when I'm automating and everything like that, you know, it's going to follow the Dolby Atmos renderer. So let me go ahead and go back to the URL R for reading because I don't want to press leave the W and accidentally record it. Because if I use the VST multi panel, pretty much if it's in the P or post, if I use differently. So let me go ahead and go to VST multi panel. If I do that, you know, even though it's going to make an automation, it's not going to do anything with Dolby Atmos. It's not going to be both wired together because if it's inserted as an effect or a send, because this is a little different. So you want to load by just double clicking this object panel right here and that's where you control the Dolby Atmos. Since I do not have a surround sound, you know, and I want to export this, I can just down mix it to 2.0 as a stereo and you get only left and right. As you can see it works. And you can and let me go ahead and go back to the 7.1.4 you can see the 7.1.4 out is controlling and you don't see left and right. You don't see left and right doing its own sound because I linked this to stereo for binaural reasons. Okay? So, you know, because I want to downmix it if I want to export it only as a stereo. Okay, so that is how you insert a sound as an object mode to the Dolby Atmos renderer. For beds, what I do for beds, I know I used beds as this rectangle right here. 
So I need to play it because if I if it's not making any sound, then these guys will not glow. So let me go ahead and go to right here. All right. So for example, I use my 2D clusters, so the note clusters right here. Well, my Nuendo needs an update, but I'm not going to worry about it yet. So what I wanted to do... So if I play it... Yeah, so let me go ahead and turn that on. So this is, is it as a, as a bad mode because it's, it doesn't need a lot of panning. The reason why it's in bed mode because it doesn't need to be panned because it is an orchestra that it's doing it. So that's what I use as a bed. And this is includes such as these construction backgrounds. These are loaded with Soundly. So I'm using the free edition of Soundly. Let me go ahead and open that up. You know, this is just Ambience Construction Site 37. Let me load that. So I'm using Soundly to import some of the sounds. Construction CD right here, you know, I, I import these guys out here. You know, whatever, whatever type of construction it is. You know, what I can do is I can load these sounds. Okay, and I want to, you know, just highlight the parts. You can just pour it into Nuendo, or I can just immediately drag and drop into Nuendo, and it will create a project in the pool, which is Control P, which it will create sounds. But give me a second, let me remove that instrument. It will be added in here, okay? So that will be added. Keep Just keep that in mind, and it will be included in the Soundly audio as well. Okay, so here is the ambience. I used two of them. And of course, I want to port these guys to the LFE because, you know, it needs a subwoofer then, or low frequency effects. So that will be also there. So let me go ahead and check that out again. I have Bass Manager, which I imported send this to the output surround sound <clears throat> and I want to make sure that it's in solo and plus 10 dB but you know I don't want to you know export with 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 too much bass on it but this is spent on whatever hardware you use but you don't want to end up getting your post-production mix to sound muddy all right so Let's go back to ADM for auth authoring for Dolby Atmos. You know, I'm, I use lightnings and everything like that. I, you know, most of these are in Pro Sound Effects. Some of these are from Soundly, and some of these are from, you know, Nuendo's included loops and samples right here. You know, such as like Pro Sound Effects, and also the game audio too. They, they, it also has game sound effects as well. You know, some of these are ported in, into Nuendo as well when it comes to doing these sound designs. All right. So, by the way, the object mode can be used in mono or stereo or some surround, whatever you guys want to choose, but you want to make sure it's appropriate. But I recommend stereo or mono because otherwise, if you have like a surround sound, you will, you're going to have to insert that as a bed. Okay, folks. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, and I'm just gonna put it back to where it belongs because I'm doing this to demonstrate you. And I gotta say, you know, when it comes with, you know, when it comes with getting your hands on to Dolby Atmos production suite and having Dolby Atmos renderer inside Nuendo or outside Nuendo, if you have like an external hardware which it's sold separately, you know, it's like three hundred dollars and avid like 
it, it, they, they have that on sale on Avid. So if you guys want to take a look on the external Adobe Atmos renderer, you know, I'm just going to search that on Google, and here it is. It's a sound field plugin from Avid. Remember, the, the external Dolby Atmos renderer does not mean that it's only in Pro Tools Ultimate. It can also be in Nuendo. It can also be routed to, you know, Logic, Ableton. But you have to have an extra step, such as, like, having a Dolby Music Atmos, Dolby Atmos Music Panner. So, he, so the external renderer costs $300. If you purchase it from Avid, I think this is the only one that they are selling it in with the Dolby Atmos production suite. I think that's the only one that they're selling it. You know, it's impossible to find the other ones. This is the only one that I found, you know, since I used to try Pro Tools and Sibelius, you know. You know, I know I had frustrated with Pro Tools, but now I got Nuendo and it really really got my mind well but this is up to you if you want to use it you know for me I like to use it inside the windows so I don't get into a lot of struggles but you know if you want to use like an ADM export to have users who owns the, the external Dolby Atmos renderer you will have to export it as an ADM file everything like that so all right so here here's the results and here's what you get. I know when it comes with severe panning, you know, so the CPU sometimes consumes, okay? So you just gotta be aware. So here's what we get on the sound with the hammer. You can see these guys moving. This one right here, just pay attention to this. Okay, let's watch that again. As you can see, well, since I'm screen recording it and and doing this at the same time with Nuendo, the CPU increases. If I don't have screen recording on, that wouldn't be a problem with my CPU meter. Okay, guys. So this is how you, you know, put all these tracks or clips to be routed to Dolby Atmos. So this is how you can route all these tracks to Dolby Atmos. So I know this is a very, very tough one, you know, and I'm trying to give you guys step-by-step step very slow. But if you have anything, any questions or anything like that, you know, you're more than welcome to comment. Whatever you guys decide, you know, you know, what are your thoughts if you accept this? And if you didn't accept or whatever, you know, you can just slap a like, give it a comment, whatever you guys want to do. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And don't forget, before you leave, subscribe to our channel.